the typical cell membrane is a fluid mosaic of proteins and glycoproteins and glycolipids. Now we're going to look at membrane proteins in terms of how they are stably incorporated into membranes and in the course of doing that we'll look at several general functions and a few examples of proteins with specific functions. Well first of all here's an illustration of several themes of organization of, of proteins in a membrane. The example here is of a plasma membrane although there are no glycoproteins here. So what you see are six integral membrane proteins I see two peripheral proteins, one cytoplasmic and one that is outside the cell, both attached to the membrane via transmembrane proteins or integral proteins. So we have transmembrane proteins, we have membrane associated proteins, we have some protein lipid complexes where the protein is covalently attached to the phosphate head of a, of a phospholipid. Well, if you look at the integral transmembrane protein on the far left, you can see that the portion that is in the membrane is alpha helical. As it passes through the phospholipid bilayer, the helix is associated with the phospholipid tails. The green balls on this helix are the side chains of the amino acids, and they must all be hydrophobic in order to interact with the hydrophobic fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. And that's true then of all the cartoon proteins shown in the picture above. If you look at the picture again, all the portions of these membrane proteins that are either poking outside the cell or poking into the cytoplasm must of course be hydrophilic so that they are stable and can interact with the watery environments inside and outside the cell. This is called glycophorin A. It's on red blood cells and it's a real example of, of an alpha helical region of this polypeptide glycophorin A embedded in the membrane showing you the actual sequence. 